How to use one light four different ways. Only got one light? No problem. Keep watching to learn four different lighting setups using that one light to take gorgeous photos. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd. I am a professional photographer in Silicon Valley, California. And when I first got started, I could not afford a ton of lighting gear. I had a couple different strobes, but back in the day before everything had really great batteries built into it, I'm gesturing at my lights as if you can see them. We had to plug everything in or buy a really expensive power pack. And that was out of my budget. So I got a Paul C. Buff with the Alien Bees stuff, one of their power supplies, which was basically an inverter and a motorcycle battery. And I lugged that thing around with me so I could plug in my one strobe. And I had one softbox. So that was what I used for a long time. And I got really, really good with one light. It's how I developed my signature style. Whether it was indoors or outdoors, everything I did was with one light. So I feel like I'm pretty gosh darn qualified to teach you how to take gorgeous photos using one light. And because you probably don't want everything to look the same every single time you do a shoot for the rest of your life, I'm going to give you four different ways that you can use that one light to take really different styles of photography. So let's dive in. All right, so I did this shoot the other day. And these images are straight out of camera, no editing done. And the reason I'm, I'm showing you unedited images is because I don't wanna show you something super polished and then have you try the lighting setup, have them not look the same and think that, you know, either you're not good at this or I'm making all of this up. I want you to see exactly what I get when I take the photos so you can get the same thing. And then the way you edit them is entirely up to you. So. First setup, this is how I do all of my boudoir sessions. Uh, I do one light off to the side about 90 degrees from my client. And here is a lighting diagram of that. So I am right here, my client is here. She could be facing any direction, but my light, which is a gridded strip box, is always off to the left side or the right side. It's it's 90 degrees from the camera no matter what we're doing. So in this situation, I'm facing her. She's turned 45 degrees from me. The light is another 45 degrees from her. And we get these cool highlights on her, a little bit of spill on the bed, but the rest of the room is dark. If I were to add a second light to this, which I usually do, I might throw a rim light on her hair because you know we're losing her dark hair in the dark background, or I would put a background light again, to create that separation. But this is still fantastic just the way it is. And again, totally unedited. So if I were to edit this, I'd probably boost my shadows, my blacks just a little bit. No, good there. And you know, I desaturate most of my images. They still have a little bit of color in them. Um, but I like to do that, a little bit of clarity. And you can see like how rough the texture is on the skin now. I would go through and edit all the skin as well. But this is how I get my signature look with Boudoir. The lighting setup is that simple. So again, here's a look at the, the setup right here. It's just 90 degrees between me and the camera. Easy peasy. All right, let's go to setup number two. And that is this look right here. Uh, you can even see where the light is here in the background, but I'm just creating a rim light on her. This is great for showing profiles or detail shots, things like that. If you are photographing someone who's very muscular and has great muscle definition, this will carve out every little cut on their body. So when I wanna show somebody's six pack abs, this is the lighting setup I use. Plus, it's super dark and dramatic, and I think it's pretty fantastic. And again, it is just one grid. This thing is not to scale. It's not the size of her. It's right here. This little guy. Uh, usually about seven to eight inches across, and it has a honeycomb grid. That is all I have on her. And again, normally my other light is 90 degrees to the side. This one is back 45 degrees from that to create this look. 
that's it. And again, you could turn her different directions. If I were to add a second light to this, I would absolutely throw a background light on the right side over here because we're losing her hair in the frame. If she was blonde, wouldn't be an issue at all. But really, it's it's the highlight on the face. It's the, the collarbones here. That's the detail that I want to see. Now, when you're using a light modifier like that, you have to be careful not to blow out these highlights. It can be really, really easy to overexpose them. And you can see when I zoom in, um, I'm looking over here at the histogram, by the way, at the values, and you can see they're almost all at 100, which is totally blown out. But because I shoot raw, we can drop the whites, highlights down a little bit, Again, another reason to shoot raw, so I can make these adjustments, and there we go. That looks a lot better. And I would go through with an adjustment brush, yoink, remove that little bit of lens flare there, and boom. I think this is a pretty darn cool photo. She was stoked with it. So again, super easy. It's just one honeycomb grid, 45 degrees off from the back. Uh, and you can take these stunning portraits to show off all the muscle definition or somebody's cool profile. All right, now less dark and moody. Uh, this is like classic fashion beauty lighting right here and super simple. I just take one soft box. Mine is, I believe, a 20 by 30 inch, maybe it's 24 by 36, and it is straight in front of my subject looking down at 45 degrees. And if you want to know more about what these setups actually look like in the room, if you head to boudoirguild.com, I have very, very thorough lighting trainings in there where you actually watch me go and put the light stand down, adjust the modifier, show you the angles, the distances, the height, everything in there, and how to know if you're doing it wrong because there are telltale ways, different shadows you can identify, highlights you can identify that will tell you if you're off. I go over all of that in detail in the Boudoir Guild's lighting course. So again, boudoirguild.com and you can find it there. We'll have it linked down below. So what I love about this one specifically, this setup, we get highlights on the forehead, the cheeks, the cheekbones, on the nose, uh, you know, I might blend that just a little bit, but I think it looks great already. And it carves out the jawline because we have the softbox. We're not at eye level. We're aiming down at her at 45 degrees. So the softbox is above eye level pointed down at her. So that is how we get the shadow underneath the chin. Uh, not a whole lot I would do to this one. I mean, I would go and, you know, do some skin smoothing, things like that. I would go and smooth out the curve right here where her bodysuit was bunched up. Any little fuzz on her top I would get rid of. But again, this is straight out of camera and I think it's pretty darn fantastic. So one more look at the lighting diagram. Just a softbox over, overhead looking down at her and then I'm shooting directly under the softbox. So the lip of it's here and my camera's pointed underneath it. And you can see from the angle here, my camera is right about level with her shoulders. And I like to do that because when you shoot up at somebody, especially with a 35 millimeter lens on a full frame camera, you get a little bit of distortion that stretches people out, makes them look longer, leaner, a little more tall. Um, and it's a more powerful pose as opposed to shooting down on someone, you shrink them. And I don't know many people who wanna look shorter and stubbier. So uh, this is, you know, easy posing tip there. And this lighting setup is great too because uh, there's so much light everywhere, you can point her in any direction or straight on and it's going to be great. All right, so now for number four, the last lighting setup. A little bit different take on the one I just showed you. Similar mood and feel, a little bit more drama. So this one, let me go back to the previous. Here we're straight on, a little bit overhead. For this one, we're gonna move the softbox 45 degrees this direction and you know, 45 degrees from the camera. Uh, otherwise, same height above head level and aiming down at my subject. So what I like about this is we get some more directionality. So I can have her looking into the softbox and we get shadow on this side. You can tell uh, which direction the light comes from because her shadow is not directly behind her. 
it's off to the side a little bit. So if you draw an imaginary line from the shadow through her body, you can see where the softbox ends up. We can't see catch lights in her eyes, so you don't know what what shape it is, but that's another way that you can tell. Uh, and I have that also part of the lighting course in the Boudoir Guild. So when you look at most photos, you can figure out exactly how they were lit. All that's covered in the course. So again, this is one of my favorites that I like to do because you still get the directionality. You can carve out the cheekbones here. You get highlight and shadow. Uh, you're creating separation because you're getting the shadow behind her on the dark side. It adds depth to the image. Um, whereas this one, it's more, more even lighting. So if someone has more texture in their skin, maybe acne scars or wrinkles, this setup probably going to be a little bit better. This one, some more directional light off to the side is going to show more of those things. So keep that in mind when you're picking which lighting style you want to go with. It just means less editing in the end if you want to smooth those things out. So one more recap on where that light is. Big soft box, 24 by 36. You could use an Octobox. You could use any, any big soft box, whatever shape it is, doesn't matter. Uh, the bigger, the better, I'd say. And you wanna keep it above head level, pointing down at 45 degrees. If you're not sure where 45 degrees is, totally fine. It's basically halfway between the camera and this side. If they're facing directly at you and they hold their arm out toward the side, you wanna get halfway between the arm and the camera. And that's right about here. So uh, again, this isn't to scale, but you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So uh, whether you want to go dark and moody like my normal boudoir setup, if you wanna create a really dramatic profile of somebody, that's the word I was looking for, uh, you can do that with a simple honeycomb grid. If you want more traditional fashion inspired beauty lighting, that's what we have here. Or a little bit more directional fashion lighting, I love this as well. Four lighting setups for one light. And again, you don't need to spend a ton of money to take gorgeous photos, you can do it on a budget. And once you've established your style, you started bringing in revenue, then you can buy more lighting equipment and you can check out part two to this, which is four different lighting setups using two lights. And same model, we shot these back to back so you can see exactly uh, what we put together here. So be sure to check that out as well. You are amazing. See you inside.